May 18, Psalm 75 We thank you, O God. We give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. God says, At the time I have planned, I will bring justice against the wicked. When the earth quakes and its people live in turmoil, I am the one who keeps its foundations firm. I warn the proud, Stop your boasting! I told the wicked, Don't raise your fists! Don't raise your fists in defiance at the heavens or speak with such arrogance. For no one on earth from east or west or even from the wilderness should raise a defiant fist. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. For the Lord holds a cup in his hand that is full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours out the wine in judgment, and all the wicked must drink it, draining it to the dregs. But as for me... I will always proclaim what God has done. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. For God says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. Psalm 76 God is honored in Judah. His name is great in Israel. Jerusalem is where he lives. Mount Zion is his home. There he has broken the fiery arrows of the enemy, the shields and swords and weapons of war. You are glorious and more majestic than the everlasting mountains. Our boldest enemies have been plundered. They lie before us in the sleep of death. No warrior could lift a hand against us. At the blast of your breath, O God of Jacob, their horses and chariots lay still. No wonder you are greatly feared. Who can stand before you when your anger explodes? From heaven you sentenced your enemies. The earth trembled and stood silent before you. You stand up to judge those who do evil, O God, and to rescue the oppressed of the earth. Human defiance only enhances your glory, for you use it as a weapon. Make vows to the Lord your God and keep them. Let everyone bring tribute to the awesome one, for he breaks the pride of princes, and the kings of the earth fear him. Psalm 77 I cry out to God. Yes, I shout, oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long I prayed, with hands lifted toward heaven, but my soul was not comforted. I think of God, and I moan, overwhelmed with longing for His help. You don't let me sleep. I am too distressed even to pray. I think of the good old days, long since ended when my nights were filled with joyful songs. I search my soul and ponder the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will He never again be kind to me? Is His unfailing love gone forever? Have His promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has He slammed the door on His compassion? And I said, This is my fate. The Most High has turned His hand against me. But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. O God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the Red Sea saw you, O God, its waters looked and trembled. The sea quaked to its very depth. The clouds poured down rain. The thunder rumbled in the sky. Your arrows of lightning flashed. Your thunder roared from the whirlwind. The lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. You led your people along that road like a flock of sheep, with Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. Psalm 78. O my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I am saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about His power and His mighty wonders. For He issued His laws to Jacob. He gave His instructions to Israel. 
He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children, so the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born, and they in turn will teach their own children. So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting His glorious miracles and obeying His commands. Then they will not be like their ancestors, stubborn, rebellious, and unfaithful, refusing to give their hearts to God. The warriors of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned their backs and fled on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by His instructions. They forgot what He had done, the great wonders He had shown them, the miracles He did for their ancestors on the plain of Zoan in the land of Egypt. For He divided the sea and led them through, making the waters stand up like walls." In the daytime he led them by a cloud, and all night by a pillar of fire. He split open the rocks in the wilderness to give them water, as from a gushing spring. He made streams pour from the rock, making the waters flow down like a river. Yet they kept on sinning against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They stubbornly tested God in their hearts, demanding the foods they craved. They even spoke against God himself, saying, God can't give us food in the wilderness. Yes, he can strike a rock so water gushes out, but he can't give his people bread and meat. When the Lord heard them, he was furious. The fire of his wrath burned against Jacob. Yes, his anger rose against Israel, for they did not believe God or trust him to care for them. But he commanded the skies to open. He opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna for them to eat. He gave them bread from heaven. They ate the food of angels. God gave them all they could hold. He released the east wind in the heavens and guided the south wind by his mighty power. He rained down meat as thick as dust, birds as plentiful as the sand on the seashore. He caused the birds to fall within their camp and all around their tents. The people ate their fill. He gave them what they craved. But before they satisfied their craving, while the meat was yet in their mouths, the anger of God rose against them, and he killed their strongest men. He struck down the finest of Israel's young men. But in spite of this, the people kept sinning. Despite his wonders, they refused to trust him. So he ended their lives in failure, their years in terror. When God began killing them, they finally sought him. They repented and took God seriously. Then they remembered that God was their rock, that God Most High was their Redeemer. But all they gave him was lip service. They lied to him with their tongues. Their hearts were not loyal to him. They did not keep his covenant, yet he was merciful and forgave their sins and did not destroy them all. Many times he held back his anger and did not unleash his fury, for he remembered that they were merely mortal gone like a breath of wind that never returns. Oh, how often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved his heart in that dry wasteland. Again and again they tested God's patience and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power and how he rescued them from their enemies. They did not remember his miraculous signs in Egypt, his wonders on the plain of Zoan. For he turned their rivers into blood so no one could drink from the streams. He sent vast swarms of flies to consume them and hordes of frogs to ruin them. He gave their crops to caterpillars. Their harvest was consumed by locusts. He destroyed their grapevines with hail and shattered their sycamore figs with sleet. He abandoned their cattle to the hail, their livestock to bolts of lightning. He loosed on them his fierce anger, all his fury, rage, and hostility. He dispatched against them a band of destroying angels. He turned his anger against them. He did not spare the Egyptians' lives, but ravaged them with the plague. He killed the oldest son in each Egyptian family, the flower of youth throughout the land of Egypt. But he led his own people like a flock of sheep, guiding them safely through the wilderness. He kept them safe so they were not afraid, but the sea covered their enemies." He brought them to the border of his holy land, to this land of hills he had won for them. He drove out the nations before them. He gave them their inheritance by lot. He settled the tribes of Israel into their homes. But they kept testing and rebelling against God Most High. They did not obey his laws. They turned back and were as faithless as their parents. They were as undependable as a crooked bow. They angered God by building shrines to other gods. They made him jealous with their idols. 
When God heard them, he was very angry, and he completely rejected Israel. Then he abandoned his dwelling at Shiloh, the tabernacle where he had lived among the people. He allowed the ark of his might to be captured. He surrendered his glory into enemy hands. He gave his people over to be butchered by the sword because he was so angry with his own people, his special possession. Their young men were killed by fire. Their young women died before singing their wedding songs. Their priests were slaughtered, and their widows could not mourn their deaths. Then the Lord rose up as though waking from sleep, like a warrior aroused from a drunken stupor. He routed his enemies and sent them to eternal shame, but he rejected Joseph's descendants. He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim. He chose instead the tribe of Judah and Mount Zion, which he loved. There he built his sanctuary, as high as the heavens, as solid and enduring as the earth. He chose his servant David, calling him from the sheep pens. He took David from tending the ewes and lambs and made him the shepherd of Jacob's descendants, God's own people, Israel. He cared for them with a true heart and led them with skillful hands.